An SDAT and a QA Automation Engineer are two different titles, but they have quite a few similarities in common, and I'll explain you those. But I was actually shocked recently when one of you guys, one of our YouTube subscribers, gave me the call and asked me to help her to get ready for an interview. She said that she went through another bootcamp where she have learned to become an SDAT. But after interviewing her for a couple of minutes, I realized that she was actually a QA Automation Engineer and not an SDAT at all. So that's exactly why I've decided to explain to you guys difference between both, between a QA Automation Engineer and an SDAT. And on today's video, you're gonna know what exactly are the differences officially and what are the actual differences that are on the market, because market is quite different from the official definitions. My name is Sergey Kramchenko, I am a QA Engineer Lead Manager and a Senior Engineer Manager of SDAT in the past. These days, I'm helping people just like you to become a QA Automation Engineer from scratch or to improve your existing skills. And by the way, I'm a founder of the QA bootcamp called Comify. All right, now let's get started. Titles are quite vague topic in the United States. I've seen positions for the QA engineers, testers, analysts, even for QA ninjas, and almost all of them had exactly the same responsibilities and requirements in a job description. But honestly, every company on the market can define those titles in a different way based on their location, based on the type of management, and based on quite a few other things like a company size, etc. But today we're going to concentrate only two of them, on a QA Automation Engineer and an SDAT. And first of all, there are going to be two main definitions, an official one and the actual one that you see on a market. So let's start with an official one. An official one for an SDAT. An SDAT is a software development engineer in test, which is pretty much a software developer, the person, the programmer, the person who creates applications, create mobile apps, etc., that can do testing or that can write some automation tests for the company. But QA Automation Engineer, on the other hand, is the QA engineer that is not involved directly in a software development, but the person can code and write a code for automating manual tasks such as end-to-end -end tasks, such as regression tests and others. But those two official definitions will not always work in the intended way. In a lot of times, I would say actually in the majority of times, SDATs will not do any software development or QA automation engineers, just like myself long time ago, will actually do some of the DevOps job or the software development for the front end, back end, or regardless. And that's totally fine. We're all looking for the new ways to call old things because it's pretty much a trend to take something old and show it to you in a new way. Just like we've all learned in the past during Arnold Schwarzenegger's times that eggs are good and you can build huge muscle with the help of a lot of eggs. Then Arnold said, well, I saw some scientific researches that eggs are bad if you eat a lot of them. Then he said, well, eggs are actually still good for you. And then we've learned that the meat was good. And then we've learned that the seafood was better than meat. And then we've learned that becoming vegan is even better, better than, than even, even, even eating, eating meat, meat and, and seafood. seafood. And now I'm like, what is a newest trend? I'm getting lost in all of those. Fuck this. In the same way, startups are trying to call old things with the new names. QA Automation is now called an SDAT. QA Engineer is called QE or the Quality Engineer. And all of those in majority of cases, not in all cases, once again, mostly official names, official titles will be applicable for large corporations because they're very structured. But for majority of the startups as majority of companies in this world are actually startups. For those, titles are very vague. And that's exactly why SDAT can be a QA Automation Engineer, QA Automation Engineer can be doing a job of SDAT. And let me give you a few examples of those based on my experience. When I worked in one of the US-based startups in California, one day our company had decided to switch titles from QA Automation Engineers to SDATs. And that was done for a couple of reasons. Reason number one, because we wanted to attract more talent. And talent wants to be, wants to feel more, not only attractive, but more modern. And, and as that is a more modern in some way, a way to call key automation engineers. That was the first reason. And the second reason was about the QA letter. Our 
QA department or our company wanted to build the QA ladder for the QA engineer so they would know what exactly is advanced level of QA automation job or I wouldn't even say mid-level of the QA automation job. They had their title switched from a QA automation engineer or a junior QA automation engineer to as that one. And then they could become as the two, three, four, and so on and so on. And the funny thing is that those people, they have never done any development. And officially, it would not make sense for them to become an as that. But after that, after our company have switched from QA automation engineering titles to SDATs. They're all software development engineering tests who have never did software development. And that's completely fine because every startup in the United States is not officially required to call certain titles in a certain ways. That's completely up to you, the startups, how to call them. As I mentioned, I have seen QA Ninja job openings on the market and that was kind of cool, right? Wouldn't you want to be called a QA Ninja when you're making $100,000? I think that wouldn't matter for you when you're making that much money. But also it works the other way around. When I was working for one of the large corporations in the United States as the QA automation engineer, I have started working on the DevOps tasks. Pretty much I do a DevOps job or software development operations job for my QA team. And the thing is, no one cared that I was QA automation engineer. I was given those tasks, I got them, I've completed them, that's it. No raise, no promotion, and that's completely fine. No one is required to change your title unless actually there is the QA letter or you are directly asking for them. But during that time, I did not. I would keep working for that company for multiple years and then I would switch to another company to work as the senior QA automation engineer. And once again, since I did have some experience doing DevOps job or working with the pipelines or with CI CD, I started doing more advanced stuff with the CI CD that not even some, I mean, actually none of the DevOps in the company would know how to do that. And I was able to figure that out on my own, but still my title was still QA automation engineer. And one lesson I learned from it that I want you guys to know is that you should never be shy to ask for promotions. If you're a QA automation engineer and you started doing DevOps work or a pipeline job, that means you can potentially get a new title. You can potentially get a raise. And all of that is only available if you will ask your management for a promotion. Otherwise, no one will give, will give it to you for no reason, right? All right, and now I want to talk about becoming a QA automation engineer versus an ASDAP. For you guys, as the beginner, it is going to be much easier to become a QA automation engineer compared to actual ASDAP because as an ASDAP, you need to know two things. Number one, you need to know software development, which is much harder to learn compared to test automation or QA automation. And inside of development, you have to know QA automation or you have to be a tester. So instead of learning two things, you can simply learn one thing and become a QA automation engineer. And that is usually possible within about six months or half a year. And we're actually offering a course at Codemify where you can learn to become a QA automation engineer from scratch by learning manual testing and then automation testing within five months and a half. And if you guys are interested in becoming a QA automation engineer from scratch or you would like to see how that could possibly be done, I'm going to leave a link right here to a video with Arthur who went through our course, who's now working for the software election company for the company that's built software for the election that is going to be used for election in 2024 and 2028 and etc and by the way if you guys are interested i'm giving a 10 percent discount to every single person who sign up month in advance and why i do that is because when i went to a coding boot camp 10 years ago i thought i'm going to be one of the dumbest people in a class that's why i've started preparing myself half a year in advance and when i came to the class or to the boot camp i realized oh i'm actually one of the smartest here because no one else have prepared for the course only myself so now i want you guys to do that and that's why i'm encouraging you to sign up a month in advance and I'm giving you the section of the pre-education materials that you could learn on your own so you could start rolling your snowball because I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with the snowball effect and if you're not the snowball gets bigger the longer you are rolling it so if you start rolling your snowball month in advance the course then when the course starts your snowball is going to have some size and for majority of people who will only start rolling their snowball at the beginning of the course they will 
not have a snowball at the beginning, but you already will. Regardless of where you go, start learning things as soon as possible so you could be ahead of the game. So I'm going to leave a link right below this video so you could sign up a month in advance and get 10% discount as I've promised. By the way, since you guys are enjoying this video, make sure you will hit that big fat thumb up button below and subscribe to our channel. And also subscribe to our Instagram and Telegram communities if you do not want to miss any news, stories or updates with the discount and promotion codes for all the future courses. So the conclusion of this video is following. Don't be afraid to apply for jobs that you don't think you might be a good fit for. You're much more capable than you think you really are. And if you guys have any questions or you're interested in learning more about the QE courses we offer, feel free to book a free consultation with me. The link to which I'm going to leave right below this video. Thank you and I'll see you next time.